three, two, one. <laughs> The links down below have been replaced. We will not be advertising Green Man Gaming for the foreseeable future. Please, head to the link down below and help any way you can. What is going on, fellow Kerbal fans? It's your boy, Hunter, coming at you live from Jewel, except definitely not because there's at least one hour's worth of time delay between Carbon and Jewel. Close enough to live. What? Close enough to live. Do you know what the communication delay between Earth and the moon is? It's a couple, couple. seconds. Yeah. Between Except Mars. Uh, Mars is a few minutes. Yeah. Jupiter is a couple of hours, and if Jewel is the Kerbal equivalent of Jupiter. Yeah, it's about an hour and a half, two hours behind. Yeah, something like that. Don't even get me started on Pluto. Uh. Well, that's what. So we, we got a you? So we got a rock today. Oh boy, a rock! A really big rock. Oh boy, a really, really big rock. I'm gonna go ahead and fuel up the lander. Quick word about this rock is that this is what the fourth smallest rock in the solar system smallest fourth smallest i mean look at this thing uh, there are <laughs> a number of notable small objects within kerbal space program they are bop pole gilly and minmus i think minmus might actually be smaller than this thing And now the crew for this wonderful journey. We got Jeb. He'll be taking uh, the new and improved and amazing lander, or the spider, as we've been calling it. Uh, we will take Connor with us. And then for our engineer, we will bring Ellen. Okay, just to make sure that's everything. It isn't. We gotta unhook the struts. Because this thing's tied down like crazy good. Alright. Uh, Connor, are you the engineer? No, you're not the engineer. Ellen is the engineer. Alright, go EVA. Okay. Cutting all the EVA struts so that we can get down onto the planet and not take the entire Pegasus ship with us. That would probably be a pain. I don't plan to deorbit Pegasus anytime soon because its performance is exceeding all of my expectations. Just like Curiosity, huh? Uh, no, this is doing better than Curiosity. Also, wrong rover. <laughs> Opportunity, you're right. Oppy, yes. <laughs> Curiosity, we know when that's gonna die. <laughs> Opportunity, however. 35 bloody years. 35? No. <laughs> Wait. Hmm? Jesus, not even close. <laughs> My brain fucked right now. Right, we'll undock the lander because it's causing the whole damn ship to wobble. <laughs> there we go, just let it float away a little bit. If only we could figure out how to make that thing fit all seven people we have on board. Okay, here we are. This is the Starshot Trailblazer, also nicknamed the Spider because, well, it's huge and its legs are particularly long this time. 
Now there is an Easter egg somewhere on the surface of this planet. And I'm not sure if we're going to hit it. I'm also not sure where we can land. Ideally, we should aim for some somewhere flat, although the problem is nothing down there is flat. So we're going to look for a nice crater to duck into. Uh, landing guidance, land at pick target. Okay, so that still doesn't work. Ugh. Okay. Don't worry then, I'll figure it out. If we burn it, perhaps we'll be near the South Pole, but I mean, get us some information on this rock that we're looking at here. Oh God, this is really good coffee. Okay, Bop, small moon in the vicinity of Joel. In Kerbin mythology, oh, wait, hang on. In Kerbin mythology, it is believed to be the home of the Kraken, a, mischie a mischievous creature said to play with the ships of hapless explorers by spinning them out of control until torn asunder. What is Pokemon Kraken like not a good idea? But the but the Kraken is it was slain a while ago. <laughs> now there is somewhere on the surface of this planet a Kraken corpse. Although I don't know where. Actually from this altitude we should be able to see the darn the darn thing. The moon's not that big. Latitude and longitude coordinates are 23.87 degrees west and 64.57 degrees north. Oh, no, I know. That's just the highest mountain. Damn it. It's worth noting. This thing has some really tall mountains. The highest point on Bop is an astounding 21,758 meters, marking the highest point above sea level in the Kerbal system. So this tiny mountain, this tiny rock here has the tallest mountain. Figure that out. <laughs> All right, give me some... Uh retrograde systems make sure these buttons are working so long story short hey hey we landed on bop because we're awesome yes here we are on the surface of bop you totally didn't miss anything you totally didn't miss all the damn science so here's the deal when I hit the buttons here like button five to shut down the engines I also hit button four three and two and one and for some reason because of that that swapped the scenes <laughs> So I'll go over everything again. So we have already deployed the two smart. Uh, we got the we got the snake eater ladder here. We were talking about the snake eater ladder. Our science camp has already been set up. We got two seismometers, and it turns out we did not pack two of the extremely important control stations for the science camp, so we're using the one from up here. But we have a spare onboard Pegasus, so we're just gonna 
make sure we load that up before we head to our next, before we land on the next planet. The Too Smart can get about, um, I want to say about seven meters per second safely. All right, so another thing we need, we were gonna try and find was the Kraken. So it says from here. Oh, don't forget my bad idea. What? Landing a too smart. Oh yeah, the bad idea of landing a too smart on uh, Gilly. I'm gonna work on designing the lander. Landing too smart. Well, no, we're just gonna use a regular lander. <laughs> but the experiment for the experiment for Gilly is that um, the lander the lander is only gonna go down with two people. The third guy is gonna jump. Hey, and that's gonna be the real exciting part. <laughs> There's not really any definitive lo way to find him. He is at the North Pole. And if we were to drive there, here's the fun part. Uh, Rover Autopilot. We set a waypoint all the way <laughs> What the? Oh my god. For reals with this again? We talked about this. Okay. If we add a waypoint all the way up to the North Pole, which is about. Ugh. Show me that map again. Wait. Houston, we have a dot. It's about there. It's one, it's about one fourth of the way around the planet, but that could be it. Pegasus! <laughs> Come in, Pegasus. A little Pegasus assistance, please. I am curious, though. Can the two smart actually handle the stresses of landing when Gilly assisted? Unassisted? Probably, yeah. It's Gilly. That moon's a joke. So if that is the location of the Kraken... Hang on. The North Pole is... Well, okay, the North Pole is pretty definitively marked. Looks like a goddamn temple up there. And no, it's not. That's just the terrain generation wigging out. Off of that point, we need... Oh, this does not help. <laughs> and the page doesn't exist, apparently. <laughs> All right, let's just wing it. So if we were to create a waypoint all the way up to the North Pole, which is very definitively marked somewhere around here-ish, if we put a waypoint right there, that will take us uh, that's a 37 kilometer drive. What? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Only 37? Only 37? All right. Now you got me curious. 
We maintain a speed of five, and we drive there. We could be there in Give it a second. It's figuring it out. We could be there in Ooh. Give him give give this guy a, give this thing a minute to figure it out. Currently going three meters per second delta V. And from there, every now and then we might, might have to swerve out of the way to avoid hitting a rock or something. That won't be too bad. Let's see, try upping the speed to six. No, for some reason it just wants to go at three meters per second. Probably safer. Uh, at least four, please. <laughs> like if you have to, at least go four. Okay, four point five. Whoa! What? What the hell did you just do? <laughs> Who? The rover. Oh my god. <laughs> Front tires airborne again. Back at it again in the wrong planet. <laughs> uh, just call it like two hours. Okay, well, we're not doing that right now. We got rocks to scan. Big ones. Oh, shit, my experiment. Oh. Too smart not... will actually take the landing stress. Well, of course too smart will take the landing stress. Wait, did you just do it? Hyper edit is a wonderful little thing when you're trying to test stuff out. Well, what about, do you say paper edit? Hyper edit. Oh, uh, where you just put, put, put the, the thing in orbit around the thing? Yeah, I literally just put it in orbit and just a slight... <laughs> You have to aim it a little bit, otherwise you will crash and burn. So the too smart on its own can land on the surface. Yes, and but the one I have is lighter weight than yours. Well, yeah, mine has the arm. I'm assuming yours doesn't have the arm. It does, but I'm I'm looking. There's some things that aren't on mine that are on yours. If we really wanted to be serious about it. And I'm not. <laughs> we would need more fuel for the too smart. Now, my experiment here is Connor is going to go EVA. He's going to do a full jetpack burn over to that rock just to see if we can. It's uphill. So, going to need more altitude than this. I'm not going to lie, he might actually be able to achieve escape velocity with his jetpack alone. And right now, he's only going 30 meters per second. You know how much delta V you need to land on, Gilly? 30 meters per second. This is why the third guy is going to jump. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one thing we didn't do with all that lost footage is we didn't raise the flag. Thankfully. This is another rubble pile. Connor, get yourself falling. <laughs> 4.15 fuel. That's incredible. All right, let's have a look at this thing. Up close. Hmm. 
Pretty sure this is one we can climb. Oh, we can. We can climb it. Connor, we're going to put a flag here, too. <laughs> Technically, this is our first flag, but it's not our official flag. All right, this, this was just Connor's rock. See, because it's a very nice rock. That's all the distance we've we covered? I don't feel like we jumped very far. Give me another look at the North Pole real quick. If we could get the car to the North Pole, I know I can find it. Shouldn't be terribly difficult. Well, no, we've driven long distance before. Dude, nice spin! And he stopped the landing. Dude, Seven that was points. awesome! <laughs> what do you think? That was an 8 or a 9? That was at least an 8.5. I'll go with a solid 9. Dude! <laughs> Ballerina! That's one of those moments where I need to play the music. Da, 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 I mean, you should always have Greg put it in. Uh... Greg's already doing the snake eater. We're gonna climb the ladder anyway because we gotta go get a new flag. <laughs> yeah, we could fly up to the top, but nah. Connor, old buddy, old pal, there is our home for the time being. You know, if we were really, really dedicated, we could explore this whole damn moon. We have a science yeah. multiplier of 12 on the surface here. Just so long as you don't run out of propellant. What, for the jetpacks? Jetpacks don't matter. They really don't. You jump inside of the capsule, and the capsule has unlimited uh, jetpack fuel. Something else you didn't know. What? Something else I didn't know. Weird. But yeah, that's uh, something that people consider a cheatsy doodle method. If your ship is small enough, just keep sending your Kerbal outside to push it. I would just have him just bonk. Yeah, just push it against the hull. We did that once when we sent Jofki to Duna forever. He wasn't supposed to come back. He came back. <laughs> uh, hey, Connor, tell me something. How's the view in there? Well, could be worse. <laughs> All right, Connor, let's get you get you back outside here. <laughs> Greg, make sure you add the uh, snake eater theme to him going up and down the ladder. <laughs> did we ever come up with a name for the mountain? I don't think we did. What do you think, Connor, as we walk away from the ship? Because that's always a good idea. Just let that bouncy little thing... What? No, it's no, it's just a, it's a good idea to plant the flag more than two feet away from a rocket engine so it doesn't get blown over. Well, yeah, there's that too. It's the thing about Apollo 11 is they planted their flag two feet away from the rocket engine so when they went to launch, blew the damn thing over. Uh, 
I think we already have a Mount Miller Jinkaru on the Mun. Mount. Oh, God, tell you what, how high is this mountain? Connor, you want to relaunch the ship and land up there? <laughs> Bad idea. Uh, I'm having a hard time determining if this is the tallest mountain on the planet. It's not even a planet. It doesn't even look like what... Alright. Tell you what. KSP, Bop, Mountains. Uh, this does not help at all. In fact, none of these are of Bop. <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna have to come up with my own name. <sighs> I named this place Mount Smeg. as a reference to one of the funniest British comedies I've ever known. <laughs> Plaque text, where we hopped on Bop. Because <laughs> that's the name of the episode, it's Hop on Bop. Actually, no, this is Bopple Mission Part 2. Because this is not our only destination. Alright, take us over to that rock, Jeb. Stop following the waypoint, Jeb. Drive more carefully, Jeb. <laughs> He's going three meters a say He's like an old grandma. Well, good news, the, elect the electric charge is back to full. And that's good news for everyone. There's Jewel below the horizon. That big green thing. <laughs> Okay, from this distance, I should be able to see what that is with some clarity. That is definitely a gravel pile. Keep going. That there is... Oh, we're going to come right up on it. That is another gravel pile. There seems to be a lot of gravel here, Hunter. Gravel planet. I was hoping for like a rock, but according to our prospector report, this place is very much a solid rock. Hmm. We're still on the slopes, which means we can't do more science. And Jeb won't take us above speed of half a mile a day <laughs> at this point it will take us many hours to reach our destination and I would have to sit here and watch the whole thing in case it falls over unless I give it the stability control which might be a good thing
the speed to uh, 12.5, see if that makes him go any faster. Or don't, because this game hates me. Oh wait, he's going a little bit faster now. Hang on. Do that again. He's not. Uh, jab. Okay. I didn't want to do this, Jeb. Ah, fuck! <laughs> I didn't want you to do that either! If you break that arm, I swear I'll kill both of you and then myself. I'll get the shovels and the backhoe. <laughs> it's the stability controller. Ugh. Stop! 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 Stop it! Stop it! You stop it right now! No! 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 Ugh. SAS! Jeb fell out. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's out. SOS. Jeb is... Gone. What are you doing up there, Jeb? <laughs> he's got the jetpack out for some reason. Up, uh, yep, he just slammed into the surface. Okay, give me the RCS control. Control from here. Yeah. What the? No. The, the, what? Why is the accelerator still on? Stop, stop, damn it, brakes. Gotta go pick up Jeb. Oh, of God. Oh, look, there's the ship. There's Connor, our friend Connor. There's his rock. Oh, my God. Where the fuck is Jeb? Why won't it let me grab Jeb? That's all the distance we've made, that tiny Tim of a goddamn tick, running around on crutches, about to expire an early death from polio. How much fuel you waste? Not a lot. Okay. You know, at this rate, might just be easier to jetpack to our destination. It's only 37 kilometers. Which is a really long distance to jump. Okay, forget I said that. Uh, Although... Oh no. What is the current velocity of Pegasus? 125. Okay. Now I'm getting real stupid. Pegasus, what is your current course? All right, bring us over to Apogee. Prepare for deorbit burn, but not actually deorbit. Just the orbit shrinkage burn. We're orbiting our. We're lowering our orbit. Filled in. You know what to do. Filled in. Okay, for some reason, I don't have control of anything. Uh, oh, because we're time accelerating. Obviously, okay. Jesus, somebody's being smart. Whatever, man. We have 13,000 meters per second delta V without that lander on board. Plenty, in other words. Dude, that's enough to get anywhere in the Kerbal system. <laughs> From here? Yeah, anywhere. <laughs> Actually, I'm not sure. Um, From here, low orbit of BOP to low orbit MOHO. 
Yeah, no, we could do that. <laughs> we could do that. Oh, jeez, I hate it when you spin like this. But we do not have a lander attached right now, so that's good. All right, good. Prepare for flip and burn. Our current lowest altitude over the planet is 69,000 meters. Nice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but in order to uh, make this work, God, she works so good when she doesn't have a lander attached. We've been working at half throttle this whole time. Okay. Apogee. Do you started it back up? What? No, oh, yeah, we started up a while ago. Oh, brain. <laughs> Apogee. Is Brain this? smart, I swear. All right, so if we burn like this right now, that'll put us in a bit of an, a more eccentric orbit. If we burn like this, all right, let me do some adjustments. Whoop. That is bad. We're just trying to polarize the orbit here, guys. Not reinvent the wheel. Okay. You know what? Just lower our, lower our altitude. Don't go too crazy on the throttle. This thing is uber powerful in orbit around this thing. Don't go below 25,000 either. Velocity or what? 25,000 meters above the surface. If we do that, we risk slamming into a mountain. Actually, at this altitude, hang on. Bop, boppily, 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 bop, 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 bop. Mountains rise to nearly 22,000 kilometers above the surface. Meaning any low, meaning any orbit below this could possibly impact the surface. And that looks like it's going to impact the surface at any second. Raise that by about 5,000. Yeah. <sighs> Because this is, the current thing is going by sea level, I believe. Tell you what, adjustment. Instead of sea level, just it's above land itself. Okay, it doesn't do it in the map screen. That's upsetty spaghetti. I was going to try to polarize our orbit. Well, we probably shouldn't. All right. Raise us just, uh, just by 5,000. We'll have a parking orbit of 31,000 meters. All right, bring us around. Easy. <laughs> Take yeah, she, it easy. Yeah, she is real close now. At periaps, we will burn retrograde again. From this distance, we would actually be able to see Pegasus from the surface. All right. Get us pointed retrograde, please. You're insane on this part, Hunter. Oh, I know. I know. I am very insane. That's the beauty of it, though. That's why I say go for it. Oh, good. <laughs> From an altitude of 30,000... 
we lower our speed here even more. A little bit more. A little bit more. That's perfect-ish. A little bit more. <laughs> That's probably as good as it's gonna get. Oh, Hunter. Yeah? Would you like an update on the folk for Stormworks? No, not on this video. No, All right, now bring us around to the other side of the planet so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Ooh, now to reveal my plan. <laughs> Joffke. He's insane. He's insane. Joffke. Got a proposition. <laughs> An express delivery. Uh, Joff Key is the most insane member of the Kerbal Space Program. That is a fact. He's gone to the Mun three times. He went to Eve in that video that we didn't record. Um, he went to Drez. He stayed on Duna for three years? Because we threw him at that planet with no means of getting back. And now, he's going to attempt the most dangerous stunt of all. We call it Hop on Bop. <laughs> but first, science! Ooh, so much science. Log the observation data from, uh, wait, this is high over Bop? What's considered low? We are 24,000 meters above the surface. Jovki. It's time. Okay. Jovki. I see you got a parachute. It won't help. Um. Jovki's hop on bop. Now, I know what you're thinking. How are we gonna get him back? Mm -hmm. Don't worry, we figured it out. <sighs> okay, we need to uh, adjust his orbit a little bit. Get him heading towards the poles. So we're just gonna dangle a rope and hope he can catch? Uh, <laughs> how do you mean? To pick him up. And this is where I'm gonna save, by the way. Alright, let's see what he does. <sighs> Somebody's gonna have to go get this guy. Good so far. Hey, Jeb. What? I know we're Jeb. Well, what the hell did you just do? Oh, whatever. <laughs> Check your throttle. Make sure. Yeah, okay, good. Take it easy, buddy. Give me an EVA report. Yeah, keep that one. <laughs> All right, wait until our periaps is directly below. Good on fuel, for now. What we should have done is we should have thrown him around where we have the lander. Okay, so let me just check something. Pegasus is still there, but it's uh, leaving rapidly. Okay. Hey, Hunter. Yeah? You forgot one thing. What? Parachutes are useless without atmosphere. He brought the parachute himself. <laughs> that was his idea. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'll bring a parachute. Uh, 
And then Jofke became the Swedish chef. Because he is insane. Most definitely. Okay, we just lost track of Pegasus. And by that, I mean... That goddamn landing. And by that, I mean Pegasus is now more than two kilometers out. It has de-rendered. What are you thinking there, buddy? Buddy old pal. We've been in stickier situations than this. That's what he's thinking. He's thinking, bring it on, ground! <laughs> All right. Coming down at 30 meters per second. What a champ. All right. So at this point, I guess it's pretty safe to say we're doing this. Especially since it auto-saved. Shit. Okay. Hit the quick save. We are going to... Uh, might as well warp to the point where we're halfway down. Current speed. Uh, distance to surface. 16,000 meters per second. Go ahead, give us a little bit of a slowdown there. Joffke. Maximum velocity of which a Kerbal can slam into the surface. Uh, I want to say 20. <laughs> uh, please give me the maximum velocity of... <laughs> Cannot warp faster than times one. All right. How long until impact? Four minutes, 30 seconds. They're going to have to go get him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuel, 3.05. Haven't even used half. Okay. Jeff Key, my utter insistence on bringing you to every single planet in the Kerbal system has brought us to yes. this point. The irony is, he's just part of the ground crew when we go to the next moon. Gotta make it interesting, though. <laughs> 15 meters a sec, 20 meters a sec, somewhere around there? 33 meters per second right now. Oh, you meant the maximum speed at which they could slam into the ground. Yeah. Try and aim for the 15, though. I'm going to aim for lower than 15. Somewhere oh, around yeah. 5. <laughs> Look, he's like... Oh. Oh. I can do this. <laughs> Look at you, you, with your blue space suit. <laughs> Yo, listen up, here's the story about a little guy that lives in the blue world. <laughs> he sings when I'm nervous. <laughs> and all day and all night, just everything he sees is just blue. Like him, we have no mech jeb. Let that sink in. We have no mech jab. <laughs> so there was a thing you said earlier that reminded me of a Kerbal video that I watched. Oh. It was the Minmus Express, which was, it was a little spacecraft. It was kind of long, but it was just basically this long pole with ladders hanging off the side. <laughs> <laughs> and what it would do, it would pass over the frozen lakes of uh, Minmus, and it would be like three meters above the surface. What you would do is you would grab it, and then at its highest orbit, it was up at like 25,000. 
and you just zip, you just ride it all the way up. <laughs> And once you're up there, you uh, circularize your orbit and all that jazz. This is the second time we've stranded Joff Key on an alien world. 10,000 meters above 10,000 meters above the surface. Time to impact. And by impact, I mean landing. 3 minutes, 38 seconds. Keep in mind that is now real seconds. In fact, I'm going to... Add a maneuver right there. Oh, no. Control is locked. I can't add a maneuver. Which means we don't have time to impact. We'd have to keep coming back to the map to figure out when we're going to hit the ground. Oh, my God. The worst part is, I think this is a longer drive. <laughs> oh, Jofki, 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 are you... Uh, just above Bops Valley. All right, that's a new EVA report. I'll take that one. Slowly gaining speed here. New time estimate, 2 minutes, 26 seconds. We're going to start seeing rocks here in a second here. Oh, boy. Who's up for a big road trip? <laughs> Keep in mind, we can't pull out the second car for this. We can't have one car go to the North Pole, and we can't have one car go get Jofki. We Unless need you that. Want to do multiple trips. No, we need that other car. Cause see, here's the thing. A, we need that car for the next moon, and B, I'm gonna put him in one of those chairs, and he's gonna ride the chair home. Which is not the most insane thing we've ever done. No way to say that for certain. <laughs> what? What is the most insane thing Jofki's done? The, the most, not, the, no, we've done more insane things, but without Jofki. I'm Jofke. asking what it is. Uh, we threw him at Duna, and we left him there. For three years, was it? Yeah, because it was just, it was basically just a capsule. He had no way of coming back. Which is why, when we did the mission to Duna with Pegasus, which he was on, he did not go down. Because he was already there. Oh, dude, he has more than enough, more than enough fucking Duna to last a lifetime. <laughs> or two. He was the Martian, as it were. This guy's the original Martian before the movie The Martian even came out. I've lowered our speed again. Two point thirteen EVA propellant remaining, just under half the tank. From this distance, one minute, 27 seconds to impact. We're starting to see surface scatter down there. Can't be too hard. Still got a smile on his face. <laughs> In a second here, though, he's going to be like, wait, holy shit, this was a dumb plan. Because now I'm going to be stuck outside for a couple of hours while they lazily make their way towards me. <laughs> hey, I see regular rocks. What? That's crazy. Oh, God, this is stupid. This is so stupid. And yet it was still a better idea than that Artemis Fowl movie. Agreed. <laughs> All right. Lay on the throttle there, Jofki. Really lay into it. Once we're over the surface, we'll do a final approach burn. It's not even a burn. We're using monopropellant. All right. 
1,100 meters, coming down at 22. Plenty of gas. Hang in there, Jofki. We will get, we will get you home, Jofki. I can promise you that. Just need to figure out how, is that a rock? Jofki, your mission objective is to get that rock. All right, 300 meters. Give it a good burn here, Jofki. Easy, 20 meters, 15 meters. Lay, lay off, a little bit more, a little bit more. A little this, bit more. Got this. A little bit, little bit Jofki. Seven meters, six meters per second. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, butter, butter, butter. Oh my god! Raise that fucking flag! <laughs> oh, Geoff Key Valley. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Where the absolutely insane, insane. Geoff. <laughs> Joffke Kerman hopped on Bop from orbit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that was impressive. That is nuts. The downside is he does not have enough fuel to get back. So he will need a ride. Or he can just start walking. The first thing he's going to do is he's going to go get that rock. Uh, from this distance, the last thing I'm going to do is determine the distance between here and the car and figure out how long it's going to take for Jeb, for Jeb to actually get over here. Um... Ellen is going to have to wait back at the ship. <clears throat> yeah, these are rocks. These are just regular surface scatter rocks. So it does have rocks. Good to know. Well... Worst part is, now we're committed to actually coming out here. That's the worst part. <laughs> be worse. Ah. How could it possibly be? Well, yeah, we could be on the moon. <laughs> oh, man, it's just a... Like... It's just oh, a pile of rocks. Damn it. Well... We'll see if Jofki has any luck. If Jofki has what? Any luck with it. Surface sample. Brown dust stains all the parts of your suit that it comes in contact with. This is apparently quite amusing to flight control. You heartless bastards. We threw him at Bop with a jet pack and a parachute that won't even work. <laughs> and they're laughing. Oh, God damn it. Oh, Rover. <laughs> okay, oh, so... We leave Jofki stranded again. We, ju we did just leave Jofki stranded again. I'm talking for, like, Duna levels of stranded. How long did we leave him there? I'm saying you could always just launch. Leave him no, leave we're not him. leaving him here again. <laughs> this is different. Okay, uh, so, Ellen... Get out. <laughs> uh, which way back to the land? That way. I think you have enough fuel to jetpack on over there. If not, you'll skid across the surface and then walk the rest of the way. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, shit! No, we need you. Ellen... I Back to the car. I just realized something very bad. 
What did you do? Jeb can't go. Jeb's a pilot. If a tire breaks, he 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 can't fix it. Ellen can fix it. But oh yeah, but you gotta pick up Joe. Yeah. The too smart only has two seats. And we have and the four smart isn't here. There is a four smart. The four seater multi purpose all terrain rover transport. Four seater too smart. It looks like a Humvee. <laughs> All right, so Jeb will take the jetpack ride back to the lander, which is good because he has most of his fuel. But yeah, no, the uh, Jofki riding on the exterior of the ship in a rover seat, not the most insane thing we've ever done. The most insane thing we've ever done would be when we came back from the MUN on the on our uh, shakedown cruise and Billy Bobgard had to ride the ladder. That was the worst thing. <laughs> God, it takes you a while to slow down there, Jeb, and you have the best suit. That's probably part of the reason that Jofki made it, by the way. I think these suits have more fuel. Or they're just more efficient. I think it's just a better suit. Don't ram into the lander, please. I'm afraid you're gonna knock it over. And nice gravity. <laughs> what the? Hmm? Okay. You'll just hang out outside then. Okay, Ellen in the driver's seat. And no, I will resist the urge to make a million woman driver jokes. She trained yours for this. She, what? What did you say? She trained yours for this. She definitely knows what she's doing. Okay, so Jofki is there in the valley. So from here, right about, mm, yeah, I think I got it. So let me do this a few more times. It's about there. Waypoints, please. We are no longer going to the North Pole because Geoff is a freaking lunatic. So that is a 53 kilometer drive. 53 clicks. I don't have the pole right now. Okay. Is so, the rover going backwards? It is. All right, drive. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh Hey, listen. About those woman driver jokes. <laughs> Don't go there. I still that might. That is definitely the software. Okay, turn off speed control, turn off heading control. Treat control, heading. control from Ellen, please. RCS. Treat speed control like cruise control in a car. Yeah, that's what it is. No, stop! You don't stop, 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 stop. lock the brakes on, Hunter. Stop it! Stop it! Yeah. I'm getting better. Wow, cool. nice landing. <laughs> Didn't bounce or nothing. Okay, so heading slowly accelerates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, turn that off. Ugh. Well. People have always asked for a second summer. Wait, there's a simple solution to this. Set him as a target.
See? <laughs> Okay, so now if we set the speed control to something comfortable like four. All right, so from there, distance to target and our waypoints. Oh, we can, we can waypoint to the target. Excellent. So Joff Key Kerman, 33 degrees by 24 by 49 north, 157 degrees, 26 by 52 west, at a speed of 4.8 will take us three hours. Well, that'll do it for the head of space program for the next month, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked it, go ahead and hit the like button really hard with your head. And hey, you may have missed the rocket landing, but you still got to see a jetpack landing. <laughs> don't say I don't do anything for you. Come and fly away. Come and fly away with me. Come, come, come and fly away with me.